Bienvenidos a todos. Welcome back, everyone. And before I introduce the panel, I just wanted to make a, um, a small comment that the presentation from the last panel by Rodrigo Suarez from ANLA, the slides will be av made available um, after the event is over as part of the recording. So you're able to hear the audio, but the slides to accompany will be part of the post recording. So here we are, our fifth panel of the Columbia Wind Power Conference. I'm a pleasure to present this one. This is Logistic Solutions for the Development of Renewable Energy Projects in the Northeast Region, the focus on ports and land routes. I'd like to introduce our panelists and our moderator, beginning with Pablo Mejia Gonzalez, el director de infraestructura del Ministerio de Transporte. Bienvenido. Javier Rebolar, head of sales from Mexico, Central America, and Colombia, from el Grupo Nordex. Bienvenido. Gracias. Oscar Ferreño, director de Relaciones Institucionales y Regulación de Ventus Energía. Um, María Mónica Díaz, onshore area manager for Colombia at Queens Gameta Renewable Energy. Hola, María. Uh, Farid Mohamadi, international sales and business development at Enercon. Hola, Farid. And finally, our moderator, Gaston Fenez, the editor of Energia Estratégica. And we are potentially expecting another one. It was Felipe de Gamboa, the head of um, sales for Colombia at Vestas, but we may catch him <laughs> mid, mid panel. But uh, without further ado, I'll pass it on to Gaston. Gracias, Emerson. Welcome, everybody. Thank you, Emerson. It's quite a pleasure to be in Colombia with with power with the level of this uh, panelists and members that would be analyzing and commenting on about the logistics challenges for the different parks and projects in Colombia. There are some days that there is a, a new being announced for renewables in Colombia. The Dr. Diego Meso, the Ministry of Energy, has uh, foreseen how this is being thought for the new bid for non-regulated customers. So there is a lot of expectation of what's coming in Colombia in the wind energy sector. Before we start with our discussion, let's see a video from Pablo Mejia Gonzalez, the Infrastructure Director of Transportation in Colombia. And we have in here in video. So he is going to present what are the challenges of the management of logistics. So if we are going to share this video, and we would start with our discussion. Uh, warm greetings to everybody that is with us in such an important event in Colombia Wind Power 2020 that is done virtually for this time. And I'm very flattered for being invited from the uh, transport ministry and from the national government. So we are going to share all with these, these spaces, all the different actions that have been taken in order to get a more effective development for these wind energy projects in the country. So I'm very glad to be here with you. I would like within this opportunity to present to you in a very succinct way, everything that we'll be working for the for this uh, purpose. In the first place, I would like to tell you or to talk about the generality aspects of the projects that are going to be developed that many of them you are familiar with, in especially for the transportation sector, the different actions that we have developed for ports infrastructure and roads infrastructure, as well as the different challenges that we have identified for this particular sector. In terms of the general aspects of the project, we know that we have nine wind uh, projects that are going to be developed in the area of La Guajira. We know that all these projects comprises the installation of wind turbines that would allow to generate uh, wind energy and electric power and also providing these to, to the energy mix for the development, not only for the area, but also for the 2030 Agenda Sustainable Objectives. So for that purpose, we have foreseen from the government 
that within these 479 wind turbines in the parks, we need to use 102 cargo boats for cargo ships and more than 4,660 trucks for moving the load that is considered a extra heavy and extra or very huge dimensions load. In that sense, we believe that as a country, this is an important project and from the different sectors, we would have some responsibility. So we are working jointly with the private and public uh, entities for that purpose. The role that we have identified ourselves is to contribute for the transportation needs and to provide these uh, according to the different requirements of the generation of wind energy projects in the Guajira area. For that purpose, we have acted in three different lines, mainly for technical visits and the diagnosis of the infrastructure that is required for the development of those projects in terms of ports and roads. We have also made a revision of the norms for, of the regulations framework for the transportation of the different pieces of machine or pieces of equipment and with the different scenarios that we could have public entities that are involved in the development of these projects. In that sense, for meeting this purpose or being in compliance with this, the transportation sector has performed a diagnosis in different elements of the infrastructure. First place, we have the C factor that is uh, giving the access routes and the ports. What we have from these uh, ministries was a revision of the different conditions of the channels. So if they were aligned to the different features that they needed for transporting the load. In that case, there were no restrictions because uh, one of the main ports that have been identified by the private sector for, for transporting this load and that is in the different but therefore, we won't have any problem. From the port infrastructure, we've been analyzing and identifying the conditions as well as the legal framework for using those ports. At the beginning, it was identified that from the norms perspective, we have the 2008 sorry, the 2008 law from 2019, so they can uh, address the different uh, cargo or load from third parties with these uh, port societies. So with this legal framework, within this uh, first uh, semester of 2019, was according with the ministry resolution stating the procedure for giving these as well as the payment for the usage of it. What we need to say is that so far we haven't gotten any request in that sense. However, we still have the legal framework and it is also available for um, 31st, up until the 31st of December 2020. In terms of the verification or revision of the port's infrastructure, we noticed some of the restrictions and the benefits of each of them. And we also are aware that from Puerto Prisa, we have made some actions in order to get a better infrastructure. What is uh, true is all these uh, words uh, from the ports where would uh, be in getting an influence in the selection of the port so we can enable the infrastructure and available for the development of the different projects. From the roads perspective, we have work from the information that has been given from uh, those projects. 
and we have performed a diagnosis of the available roads can connect ports that have been selected with a different uh, location of these wind projects with energy projects. We use these as a basis and, uh, for the movement all of these loads or cargo so they can get all the paperwork done. And in a way, we have the transportation component and by being some of these oversized cargos and or we need to to have a different areas and we need to obtain different permits for moving it so we can get a, a better and proper ideas and alternatives for that movement the main uh, corridors that were identify in terms of infrastructure of the nation that also has been uh, from uh, the different departments, municipalities, and from the private uh, sector, we know that there should be a more com comprehensive management with the responsibles of all these infrastructure to obtain the proper permits. We, we work from the nation's perspective, so we are giving our support for the identifying of these processes and to process that all these authorities in order to obtain the authorization of the proper paper. Now, with this technical uh, report, we have identified some of the restrictions to mobility of those pieces of equipment in the bridges infrastructure, in the pavement, and the different uh, roundabouts. And this, this is something that we use so the private sector can have an important input for identifying what are the different actions they need to perform or develop so in a safe way and without affecting the infrastructure, we can have the movement of this uh, load to the uh, to reaching this uh, project. I believe that today, and it has been acknowledged like that in the public and private sectors, we have very important articulation that has enabled us to have a clear frame that what are the transportation infrastructure operations that need to be to address to transport this kind of load of cargo. Uh, we are waiting for the logistics and the request for permits to move this cargo and the interventions that must be made in the different infrastructures of roads that are in charge of our country. We are very attentive to the changes that must be made if there is a previous consultation that should be required. We are seeing with the Minister of Energy uh, what is going to be happening. And so if there was a request for those consultations, we can address them in an early uh, fashion, so in order to uh, prevent any kind of uh, delay. Uh, starting from this frame, I think that we have been able to establish our work and the challenges that we are facing in the future and the things that we have already achieved is to take care of the requests made by the logistic companies to see where are the ports that will be used in order to move that cargo. But there is a willingness of the sector authorities to speed up those processes because um, some road has already been, we have already started to work on that. So the legal frame that will enable the private ports to handle third parties cargo. Uh, I think it has been mentioned that we have a limit to the 31st of December according to our legal framework and we will be keep on 
supporting and articulating with the private players and public players to develop the projects. I do believe it is quite important the work that has been carried out so far. It has been of great satisfaction and in a short time we hope to be taking care of the shipment of these products. I know that many things have been done in order for a dialogue be established in a much more effective way between the private and the government. The Vice Minister of uh, Infrastructure, Mrs. Orozco, has been very attentive to all of this, and we will be here in order to achieve whatever is required for tra from transportation to have these shipments made. Thank you, Pablo, so much for your presentation, a lot of data. And I think that each of the questions of what the experience of each company is living. Now, we will be asking Pablo to give us his opinion on the side of the private sector. Let's make a virtual round. I have Maria Monica, Felipe, um, I uh, will be guiding you. Javier, you go first. And the first question is, what are the challenges today of what you are working on on the field? What are the issues there? And what was saying Mario fr from the minister, what are the items where we have to focus? Thank you, Gaston. Thank you all from the Nordex viewpoint. I want to tell you that we have started with the manufacturing of equipment as of July 15th for the first project that will be taking place in Guajira, uh, 200 MW. Uh, so we have started strongly. Uh, we have an, been analyzing the logistics, and I would like to have highlight an item. Uh, the most critical challenge, I think, is related to ports that Pablo mentioned during his presentation. And obviously, as he has said in Bolivia and Puerto Gris, said we need some improvements uh, to be made. What we have identified so far with the review of the law of 2018 to allow private ports, Puerto Bolivar in this case, to receive third parties um, cargo, uh, in this case, or wind turbines, we see that they are not yet ready. There is a lot of uh, formalities to be undertaken with the government for this third party. We don't only have this project of 200 MW, but uh, we have another one of 173 MW, and we do need these changes in infrastructure. Otherwise, there will be an obstruction on that project. So I wanted to put this on the table because all of the players should be investing a lot of energy of that. It's, it's already ready, but Bolivar, we see that it has to be improved too quickly. Well, thank you, Javier. How about the ports? And can you give us your opinion of what has to be taken into account, Oscar? Uh, well, thank you all. I want to thank the organizer for allowing me to participate in this panel. Latin American countries from Uruguay that together we have developed over 3,500 MWs on basic and executive built more than 500 MW of wind farms in other countries in Uruguay five years ago. We faced this problem five or six years ago. 
we had to have 1,500 MWs and the sizes of 700 wind turbines. We said there will be no place at port in order to unload all this cargo and the largest port would be Montevideo and the equipment should be crossing the entire um, country to reach their location. So in we started to put order into that regard. In this case, we will have to scale almost 500 wind turbines in the Guajira, uh, five per uh, vessel. Uh, some also have the nassels, and we can have a mix uh, of cargo there. But we're talking, if we want to do it in one year time, we have to unload one vessel per week and logistic must be perfectly well organized the vessel has to be unloaded uh, gather all those material i was checking the bolivar port that puerto Risa would have the right infrastructure to date for unloading the cargo but in Puerto Bolivia, it is not clear to me that it is ready. But uh, you have a minimum schedule of 18 hours to all load all of that. And then uh, all of a sudden, heavy equipment at Grisa's port, we don't see any kind of inconvenience, but the lo length that have to cross some of those parts might be entering through another port. I think that it has to be done and we hope not to have any kind of difficulties. Thank you, Oscar. Farid, do you have any comments of what Oscar has just mentioned? Farid, you are muted. I want to thank the invitation, Gaston, and I take advantage of the presentation of Pablo Mejia. I think that his presentation covered all the different items and topics that we have as challenges. And yes, to have a macro vision we need to think that we are several, the ones that are interested in moving forward these projects, the manufacturer that is us, and here we also have Nordics and Siemens Gamesa. What we are trying to do is to verify that the projects are delivered on time because they already have commitments in place. So the norms, we see what has been done so far is valid only to the end of this year. The projects are foreseen for in two years forthcoming. So we need to know what's gonna be happening on permits. Yes, we the great improvement has been done and we thank the authorities uh, that have been involved in flex, in giving us flexibility on this, but certainly we need permits to authorize this transportation. Tariffs at ports is not clear yet, and it will be difficult for manufacturers and for generators mm. in, to discuss for future projects to have an idea uh, on costs. I think that on the slides we were able to see thousands of trucks, obviously for transportation, but you also need a, a clear area where you will be unloading. Those are large areas. And unlike other countries, um, we are making progress, great progress, but solu solutions are required right away for 
so many things. Uh, thank you, Farid. I hope that we, Felipe is joining us right now, but Maria Monica and following the or virtual round. I want to greet you all and thank you for the uh, invitation. Accordingly to what has been said, I do consider that the fact that Puerto Bolívar has been enabled for us to work there it requires for us to make changes on the roads, but that is another logistic challenge that we have to face. It meets what with that Farid was mentioning about tariffs. On the projects that are under construction right now, there's an uncertainty vis-a-vis -vis the bid that it is being thought to be launched on the big, at the beginning of next year. What are the tariffs that will be used at ports? Because those are challenges for the offers that we will be submitting during this bid. Generally speaking, we have seen that, yes, there's a movement on regulations, support on behalf of the authorities. However, we are all expecting things to move forward much more faster in order to be on time on the projects and the logistics will not be that complicated. Thank you so much, Maria Monica. When we recover Felipe, we will give him a priority so he can give us his viewpoint. What can you tell us, uh, Javier, Oscar, uh, Farid, or Maria Monica, what can you tell, tell Pablo to all of them uh, from the ministry? Well, for us, it is key to establish this dialogue. The development of wind projects in Colombia is a very important challenge for us. It is a scenario of this extent we have never had it in the past. So we are willing to give you the right conditions. But I see this in what happened at an institutional level on the coordination basis where the fourth wave of uh, road concession, huge project, 40 or 50 million pesos to develop infrastructure. And so we had to fit things in order for projects to develop. But I, I think this case is somewhat similar. I think that we have to have enablers uh, for private ports to operate and because of some circumstances that are not proper to the institution are not the most appropriate one of what we would have required. But on private ports, we need to establish under which conditions they will be operating and what the requirements will be. The challenges are in having the infrastructure enabled. I will be talking about the enablement of Puerto Bolívar uh, uh, on the tariff side. I do believe that we are working on that. So in year 2021, if the government that not has the administration, the administrative uh, uh, powers, then it will depend on the co Congress will to include in the law of budget as it had been included last year. We did not include that article, but we will have to tie that to renewable energies and royalties that will be generated throughout these projects. So what we said and what we tried is to have an article that includes the royalties in order to have that enablement the fastest way possible and have the willingness of requesting those enablements. Because at the end of the day, as government, we do not have the capability of uh, forcing them. Them, as private 
players, they also have a perception and they have to do their evaluation of what that implies for their operations because of the volume to take care of those shipments. It is true that from Divisa, we have uh, considered all of uh, the challenges they are prepared, but from the national government, we are working in order to enable the entire uh, port of our countries to respond to those needs. We have been acquiring some knowledge and some expertise in order to be prepared to face scenarios like this one. According to the previous resolution, where we saw the participation of private ports to, with third parties, mm -hmm. the cargo shipment tariffs have to adapt to the current norms. What we have been doing is to review the proposal on tariffs. So for us, it is important to hear what the project generations have to say about that. So we want to bring you peace of mind on that. Yes, we are quite aware there are many challenges to face, but we are articulating everything from the presidents of the Republic, from the Minister of Trade, the Minister of Transportation, and all the different authorities downwards, we are all willing to make a reality and try to solve all the inconveniences as they come along. Thank you, Pablo. And taking advantage of this signs that you were giving us and telling us about the measures that have been adopted, you were talking about the coordination tables, technology, uh, technology and logistics here is uh, very important because there are areas that had not been working together in the past. So all the formalities, uh, terms, taking advantage that you all have international experience in the case of Argentina, Chile, uh, what are the problems that they have faced to transport all this kind of equipment all the way to the south of the city, um, taking all that international experience that you have. I would like to ask you, Felipe, we have recovered you once again. Can you talk now? Okay, that is great. Well, uh, I'll ask you uh, the previous question so we can have your perspective on that according to what Pablo has mentioned and then we will move forward. What is your insight on the challenges from Vestas? What can we do in order to improve the infrastructure? I think that we need to enable both ports. We cannot only depend on one port, as Oscar was saying, certain loads from one side and another ones from the other. But what is key is that as a stakeholder that we have to align. Not only they are the owners of the port, but of the road that connects them to the parks. And that road is not controlled by the federal government. So we depend from them on the port and for the road. And we don't have no alternative. Cerrejón is the most important stakeholders that we have in the region. To that regard, it is difficult because they are on a strike, 75 days on a strike strike seven six seven seven and well the problem of the turbines when the operation is there is very difficult to pay attention to that because they have a higher uh, priority that is the daily operation that they are not carrying out 
To that regard, I do believe that, priva that the privates have to support Cerrejón, try to understand what they need in order to give them the tranquility that uh, that operation can be carried out without any problem whatsoever. So I think that within the government there must be an interministerial uh, work because maybe these issues must be solved. I don't know what the, how they will be doing, but uh, we have the Minister of Energy that knows that it is a strategic to have this port available, to have the projects in time and under the cost that has been submitted. And then we have the Ministry of Transportation. That is why they have to join the uh, vice presidency that is managing all of this. Those are ministerial decisions, and if the coordination among ministers is good, Serrejón will be helping us. And I think that that is the most important issue at this moment in time, uh, to be able that Serrejón will be comfortable with this and start to facilitate things. I think that is a key to achieve it. I have very good will, but I think to ask you of, uh, from them this priority is quite somewhat difficult because they are on a strike. We still have 18 minutes of in our panel. If there is some other question that is uh, away or <clears throat> far from my scope, please let us know. Let's try to wrap up and let's have Pablo to know exactly what is the overview. So I would like to hear all of you and it's part of all of this. Yes. Once we have a sector that is being strongly developed, then we have some other challenges that will be related. We have mentioned that from GE in Argentina, and it's as common to happen, especially we talk about the coordination uh, sessions. What will be your advice from all the points that could be reinforced or strengthened? We need to know that there are some actions that could ease the logistics. What would be your advice based on your experience in the, the field and in your countries? Let's start with Javier and then we can keep with the rest of them. The first comment I would like to do about your question is that in general terms and compared to other countries, our perception is that we are going or we are doing a very good job. We are in the in the proper way. We are working with the sector, we are very well involved, the government, transportation, in the vice chair area. So we have allowed to the private sector to restate the most sensitive points. And the secondly, we have gotten the support in the adequation of roads, the reinforcement of bridges and using this structure and analysis that they are needed and trying to to precise the timeline for getting the roads ready, especially with the bridge support. We know that we, to start with this Bolivar topic, one of the two options should be ready. So we know that there are a lot of works to do in the roads, adequations and or modifications, and especially some uh, other bridges, pedestrian bridges, in order to have this uh, section ready. Secondly, we have a special transportation that has been mentioned for this type of equipment. And also we just need to make some stopovers on the road and we need to start planning the chronograms for transportation so we do not impact the uh, close by communities. I think these are one of the most important aspects. This is a social aspect. We need to have a perfect coordination within the transportation companies, manufacturing developers, government, federal government and local governments so they can be aligned and in communication to the communities in the area because this is essential. They should be aware of everything that is going on 
and they should be felt uh, as part of this project. This, as a manufacturer and many other colleagues in this panel, we are looking for having this uh, perspective and trying to follow the advices of all developers and people from the government having all these local teams so we can have a proper communication with the communities. This is something that we need to highlight strongly. Oscar, what can you tell us? In addition to what I have said before, I think it's essential in Colombia and in other areas, that especially for Brisa Sport, that is essential for, for the type of equipment that is going to be delivered and the merchandise that is going to be delivered. In addition to that, we have the Bolivar that I think is not ready. Then, as Javier is saying, we need to strengthen these study areas, bridges. I know that we we still have this type of bridges and the on this uh, not heavy load could be transported in a different way, but I think reinforcing bridges is a very good option. I'm also concerned uh, about these other equipment or the different means for transportation. We just need to go through the different cities with the prop with this type of equipment, and we need to find a solution. But I think we haven't come up with an idea beforehand. In terms of transportation, I think this is for for the La Guajira area. We have this type of buses and uh, from these uh, collecting points and to other points and we have seen that, that is uh, quite common on the roads we have especially for transportation all these wind pieces of equipment so we also have the roads police so the motorway police for following up this this is also essential because we need to have a, a very well organized logistics. Also, the communications means with the community. And that will be something that is go going to happen in the next month. Well, in this coordination group, you have two minutes to go. So, Farid, you. you need to make a suggestion or give a piece of advice. Well, I think. Colombia is not having great of experience for this type of infrastructure, but there is a difference uh, with different other structure projects. Also, in order to pick what Javier has mentioned, which is extremely essential, and I think everybody will share this opinion, and that is the social aspect. We need to re-strengthen that that is part of the culture and this should be more specific. We also need to take into account that by having in all of this, we have the support. So I do believe that Colombia and we have the transportation ministry trying to manage along with the private sector, all of these logistics. I know that in the private sector, know exactly how to carry out all these projects here in the public part or in the public aspect could be having representative in each of the municipalities and can help us with these aspects of factors i know together we can be stronger but with the private sector i think uh, I th it's been done in with the leadership from the vice pres uh, vice chair area. So we are working based on this model and this is we should not separate the private from the public uh, areas. I think we could be more efficient working together. Thank you very much, Maria Monica. Would you like to add something? This is the coordination group. So you have two minutes to propose different ideas. Uh, 
there are many other things that we should take into account. While the most important area for this wind energy project is La Guajira, is not the only one. In addition to the different topics for these uh, seaports, for the collecting points, it is also important to take into account that all these other type of ports that we need to develop if we want to develop these wind energy uh, projects within the country or in more into the center. We know that we are in this um, mountain range area and that represents a huge the challenge for the transportation of the devices, the equipment, and many other parts of this project. So, so if we want to promote these wind energy projects, not only in La Guajira area, but in other areas, we need to start working along with the different developers and with the different ministries along with the different stakeholders that we are gathered here so we can have in the medium term a success in some other areas of the country. Thank you very much, Maria Monica. So we are going to keep going with the breakfast and the coordination group. I think Felipe is your turn. I, I don't know if you are already frozen or you are still there. I think we lost him. So let's have uh, some minutes to know if we can have him back. There are many other questions that uh, we have from the audience that we won't be able to address. I'm going to read them. In the budget law for the 2021 has been included the enablement of the private ports in La Guajira. Is there the possibility to have a direct foreign investment? And how can I, how can the government support so we can speed procedures up for finding also these uh, minimal procedures for storaging imports? Some of the questions that we have for this event. Now we are working, waiting for Felipe, but maybe he's having connection problems. Now um, Pablo would wrap it up. And I would like to highlight his uh, participation because it's not that common to get the public servants gathering and in order to hear your demands. He is showing a lot of interest and commitment. So I, it, I would like to point out this participation. Thank you very much, Pablo, for participating here with us and uh, for giving us these closing words for this group or panel. Thank you very much, Gaston. I'm seven against one, but it's not against, but it's, it's find the, the way to work together. If something of my public experience we can see is that there, we can say that we are working together, we're working closely together, and that is for these type of projects that represent a huge challenge. And maybe this is an important uh, project for the government and for the energy mix and for the others is a, is a way to to do we are already open to participate and discuss and build a that could bring benefit to everybody i think the concerns that uh, you have we have already identified them. It's not that we already find a solution to that, but maybe we are not far apart from your perspectives. And I think that means that we would have very good results in the short run. I think there is an, an essential idea and it's a constant in the, in the different comments and that is logistics. I think operators have been essential for identifying the different conditions of the ports, of the roads, and the different civil walls that should be done for the transportation purposes, the, as well as the different pieces of equipment that are needed for that, how we are going to manage all these traffic plans, because we know that there is going to be some impact for for and we haven't maybe find the proper size of all that. I think we have very key stakeholders, key factors, and especially the 
manufacturers have a very big concerns because we, they are the ones in charge of uh, delivering these pieces of equipment and install them. But we shouldn't lose track that this is a, a work that we are doing together. We are all here for receiving the final diagnosis and the different proposals for the roads infrastructure. We are going to have a meeting tomorrow or the next day, and we expect that we could find a solution because we've gotten so so uh, many months in, in this type of exercise for the providing the diagnosis. We know that we, we are going to be prepared so we can start receiving these pieces of equipment. So the challenges are quite big and not only for La Guajira, but for the for the rest of the national territory. For instance, as we have said, I'm very uh, calm for the uh, uh, projects that we have developed for the pluvial projects in Magdalena and in the different corridor from St. Mart and for other different options that are quite very important so we can bring the pieces of equipment to the rest of the country, especially where we have the potential for developing, the, for developing these projects. So I would like to close this for uh, addressing the social aspect. We have something from the transport ministry that it has been uh, highlighted and that we all these products should be developed along the community. We've been in the different levels and we cannot start with the different projects and we know by the different historical reference what is the meaning of that. In Colombia, we know that there is a quite an important social and community diversity and all these communities should be taken into account. So when there is some development for the country, we need to take them into account. For instance, from the housing department and the water department, we've been working on that. Transportation ministry has also worked in that sense, and we have a commitment from everybody. All the different companies that are working with the government, and we are aware of that as well from the uh, presidency of the of the country so we can get closer to these communities and to start working together and to to have uh, some answers to the requests they are doing especially for all these communities with great difficulties so uh, this is not uh, that we are against but we are all in this together and everybody from their own uh, points or perspectives you we can work together so we have successful projects so you can count on the government from Colombia and from the transportation ministry with this commitment Pablo thank you very much I think we have Felipe back so we are going to pass the floor to Felipe are you there Felipe now you are muted Great. I don't know if he's testing the microphone or we have already lost him again. Yeah, I think we have lost him again. So I'm waiting the sign from Marina. Okay. Shall we just uh, close? close this panel or shall we wait for Felipe? We are almost uh, on time. It's quite a pity we were trying to listen Felipe. Maybe we can give him another uh, attempt or another go. Felipe, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we're back. You're back. My apologies, I'm, I'm very sorry. Um, my apologies to all panel members and attendees uh, for these technological issues. I would like to highlight that turbines should also be well maintained. And we also have the responsibility from these uh, turbine manufacturers to train the people and the staff from La Guajira in maintenance. So that source of employment could last for many years 
and will be given to the people in the region. And that is a big responsibility. I think we lost him again. No, sir. I think he's lost again. Anybody could hear him? No. Okay. Quite a pity, but uh, Marina, if you want to write uh, on the chat, please. I'm very uh, pleased with Colombia Wind Power, and I would like to thank to the organization of this event. Uh, thank you for sharing this time with us. Maybe we have Emerson, and we will see soon each other. Very good perspective. And I would just like to let the audience know that we're going to be splitting into two parallel sessions now. So we'll be leaving the stage area and going to the sessions area. Um, the first will be on the potential of offshore wind in Colombia, so looking a bit longer term, as well as a bilateral private contracting of renewable electricity. So once again, thank you to all the panelists um, from government and private sector, and Gaston, well, well moderated. And we'll see you in the sessions area. Gracias a todos. Gracias. Chao, chao. Muchas gracias. Gracias. Gracias.